Well, good evening, everybody. We're a little bit early, but um, I figured I'd hop on and be able to talk for a second and give you guys a different view than what you're used to seeing. Um, want to give everyone a warning. Pull out your pad and paper. We're doing something a little bit different. Um, typically, we're tying flies, you know, that sort of a thing. Tonight, we're going to be doing a little bit of how-to. Um, I'm going to have some books. I'm going to have a little bit of website. Um, going to see how all this works. Not I'm not sure how to make OBS Studio do what I want it to. Um, going to be kind of learning tonight. Also, if you notice, not on a good camera. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday my capture card decided to die, and um, yeah, my good camera won't work. So I'm going to be on my webcam. Um, sorry, you get the ugly version of me, uglier than normal. So but yeah, looks like we're about a minute early. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to be able to hang out. I see John is on. Um, hi, John. And, uh, yeah, today's going to be some learning. Learning about how to figure out where to go fishing. Um, and what to throw when you get there. And I'm going to start off with my honest answers. Um, and then I'm going to give you the, uh, actually how to. So... Yeah, honest answers are, it's not as hard as what we make it out to be. Um, you guys know I say that regularly to you all, um, that we all overthink this sport far too much. Um, I try not to. I do my best to never overthink what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, we're now hitting about 6.30, so I guess we'll get going. I um, want to say welcome to everybody. Tonight we're going to be doing kind of how to pick out where to go, what to throw when you get there. Um, I'm gonna have, like I said a minute ago, I'm gonna have some books and uh, got them sitting right next to me. So start out, uh, let's talk about how to figure out where to go. Um, simplest answer, call a fly shop. Better yet, once we're not in COVID, go to a fly shop. Um, as you guys know, I used to work for one and I tell everybody, it made my day when somebody came in and asked, where do I go? You know, I want to go catch a trout. Where do I go? Okay. You know, I think about, you know, what time of year it is, what experience I'm having, what experience I'm hearing about. You know, okay. Well, what do I throw? That was what I was there for. And what absolutely made my day was one, somebody coming in and doing that even better the next day or the day after, them coming in or calling and saying, I had the greatest day of fishing ever. That really, you know, I can tell you this. That, that was those moments in the job where it's like, this is why I'm here. This is the best part of this job. So I'll give you three options for fly shops to talk to. Um, first one's gonna be the Orvis and Stonefield. Um, big reason is one, I used to manage the place. Two, Jake opens it up when we're back in person. Jake opens up that store for us. That is the Charlottesville chapters kind of home. Um, you know, be nice to the guys. Um, second one I'm going to say, and if this is mainly if you're going over into the valley, going crossing over the mountain, um, call it Mossy Creek fly fishing. The guys over there are awesome. Um, you've all, all had a chance to meet Andy. Um, Andy works there. Awesome dude. So, you know, from there, you know, the other one I'm going to say is Albemarle Langler down, you know, down in town. Um, great guys over there. They, uh, they open up their private waters for us. For the Charlottesville chapter and it's you know it's awesome that they do that you know I always tell people like for the shops these are little things that they're doing to help us out you know paying them back a little bit you know just by going in um but I will give you guys a tip on if you do go in how to be able to get more and better information um it's really simple pick up a couple of flies so they don't even have to be the right flies to be honest um I love to tell the story, and I, I always used to tell it when I was teaching my schools, of going to a random fly shop in northern New Jersey, walking in, and I wanted to play a game with them. I wanted to see how they were going to treat me. So I walked in, started talking to one of the guys, didn't have any flies in my hand or anything, and he's like, yeah, fishing's okay around here, you know, and started talking about, you know, some places that weren't close to where I was going to be. Um, you know, I said I was from Virginia, and I love smallmouth fishing, didn't talk about smallmouth at all grabbed a couple of flies. Amazing how much more information I was given 
and how much more accurate and kind of to what I was looking for. Um, I can tell you that's not the best way and that's not the way I like to operate, but it's oftentimes how it works, unfortunately. Um, and I'm not saying 100 flies. Literally, I had three flies, uh, you know, about $9 worth of flies. And he was like, no, 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 those aren't what you need. You need these. Handed me a couple of things I've never seen before. Um, grabbed them. I didn't fish them when I was up there because I didn't bring fishing gear. But fished them back here in Richmond. Or, well, actually, I was in Charlottesville, and, man, killed with them. Um, saved one to be able to take apart and figure out what it was and how to build it. So, you know, that's just really, you know, kind of what I would suggest doing. Because also, they're going to tell you what to fish. I mean, if you're like, I have no idea what to put on. You know what? They're going to give you ideas. Um, that's their job. You know, they're not going to sit there and be like, oh, you don't need anything. You know, no, you, you know, like, they're going to be like, oh, no, man, we're killing them on, you know, caddis. You know, on a parachute caddis or, a you know, elk wing caddis. Um... Sorry, I've said parachute caddis. I was just watching the Mossy Creek video on that. Uh, our, our friend Andy actually put it together for us. So, you know, it's a good way of doing it, you know, and I see we got a couple people from a couple of the other chapters. Um, David, Alan, yeah, we, uh, you know, thanks for coming in. So now I'm going to kind of get started, and I'm going to start on kind of my books. I like to work out of books. I'm old school. Um, I might only be 38. I am an old soul when it comes to my fly fishing. Um, I am an old school guy. I still love my books. Um, I'm going to hold up my main book um, and talk about it. Favorite book, Fly Fisher's Guide to Virginia. Uh, I call this thing the Bible because, honestly, it's about the size of one. Um I don't know how many streams are in it. I've never actually paid that close of attention. Um, my book is destroyed, as you can tell. Um, it has bookmarks in it, has various bookmarks. Um, cool thing with this book, I will say one, information can be a bit out of date on where to go. Most recent revision, which is the one I have, was 2013. So we're talking, what, eight years old? Um, so some of the roads are wrong. And uh, they were kind of wrong even when it was revised. Um, so, you know, you might have to do a little bit of uh, Google Earthing to figure out how to get to the place. Um, you know, but David Hart wrote this book. It has, it's broken down by region of the state. And David talks about fishing these places. Um, one of my favorite stories in there, and I don't remember where, what story it was, but I remember reading it. He talked about his wife, Gave him 10 minutes on the stream. He happened to be near it. He wanted to go fish it. She gave him 10 minutes. So literally he goes, I had 10 minutes to fish. I didn't catch anything. It looked really good though. You know, I mean, he's honest. Um, he's honest with, you know, what, with what he expect, with what he found. But also, you know, it's eight-year-old information. One of the things with fly fishing and with getting information, you want fairly up-to-date Um you know, as best up to date as you can, because, you know, I've heard people talk and I've had people go, oh man, I, I kill on that stream. Well, when was the last time you fished it? 20 years ago. No, no, it's not like that anymore. Um, streams change regularly. But like I said, I've got bookmarks and I actually wanted to show you one of them because we're going to uh, talk about going out to this stream. But I want to show you something else in there first. Okay. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. I quite literally have notes written in here. Um, that's for Doyle's River, and what it talks about is hike to the confluence of the two streams of Jones Run and Doyle's River and fish from there. Um, down, you know, it's the way to do it, um, basically bushwhack down to the park boundary. But we're not going to talk about fishing that stream because that's one of my exploratory streams. Um, my favorite thing to do, um, it's the reason why I love this book and I love a lot of things is a lot of, I like to blue line. I don't really go with the intent of catching fish. I go with what I call an armed hiking trip. Um, I'm going to go bring a fly rod with me and go for a long hike. So what I'm going to talk about is actually the one just below that. One of my personal favorites, North Fork of the Mormons. Um, so love this stream for my brook trout fishing. I've had 
hundreds of great days. Uh, personal record, well, not my personal record, a buddy's personal record on that stream in one day, 186 fish. Okay, not gonna say you get that every time. I've had zeros. Um, but he caught it on caught hatches. He caught literally just the perfect day, and uh, didn't have a lot of pressure. Which is one thing about the North Fork of the Mormons. It does get a lot of pressure because it is not far from town. Um, if you've been with the Charlottesville chapter and been out to what is that Mormon Farms, Mormon River Farm. Um, I don't remember where we get, where we've done a couple of our trout schools or trout trips. Um, think that's the name of it. It's right out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my camera, if I can figure out how to do it, over. Like I said, there's going to be some experimenting tonight, so. Adventure, no, not Adventure Farms, John. Um, yeah, Brian talks about, you know, keeping notes, great way. Um, so, yep, yeah, here's, I'm going to start us out at Barracks Road, because in Charlottesville, we all know where Barracks Road is, and honestly, guys, I don't live in Charlottesville anymore. I can't start from my house. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit because there is a little bit of driving involved. So from there, and judging by the book, it said follow Barracks Road out. So I'm going to keep going out Barracks Road. You know, so it switches over to Garth Run. It's Route 601. We are going to follow that out. Go past Foxfield. Back, go past a bunch of churches. You know, but I'm just literally following it, and this is what my instructions have said to do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow it till I kind of have an idea of where to go. Um, and here's where it told me to change. Basically, at the town of Whitehall, it had told me to go straight on the Route 614. So that is what the book told me to do. Um, I'm just going off of memory because it's what I remember what the book told me to do. Actually, we're not far from my sister's house uh, right here. And we're going to get down on Sugar Hollow Road. Sugar Hollow Farm. That's the name of the place um, that we've done our trout, that we've done a little bit of trout stuff. Um, and if you look, hey, look, we got Mormon's River. Google Maps is telling us that we got Mormon's River. So that tells me that, yeah, Sugar Hollow. Um, so you're going to follow that through literally up this little tiny road. And I can just tell you, you go all the way till the very end. Um, Keep going, go up past Sugar Hollow Dam, and you get to North Fork of the Mormons. So, and I just, I tell everyone, you know, kind of, there's a parking lot right here. Um, and I'm not spot burning something that isn't, you know, by doing this, I'm not spot burning something that isn't well known. Um, North Fork of the Mormons is one of the more well-known brook trout streams in Charlottesville, outside of the uh, Rapidan. Um, Rapidan, for everyone outside the Charlottesville region, that is the one everyone knows um, for good reason. It's an awesome stream. Um, North Fork of the Mormons is kind of the Charlottesville version. Um, I used to live on the south side of town. It was literally 20 minutes from my house to get to the parking lot. Now, from the parking lot, I had about an hour's hike because I like to go way up the stream. The big branch and start fishing there. Um, that's about two and a half miles in. You don't have to do that. I like to do it because I like to get away from everybody. Um, but, you know, kind of, yeah, plan to get there early, Brian. Um, plan to get there early and, you know, it's, it's a great stream. Um, you can spend all day. Uh, actually, one of my friends last year came in off the top, um, came in off Skyline Drive for it. Yeah, you pass the falls, Stu. Um, you know, I'm not spot burning that. And if I am, yeah, it wasn't much of a secret. I told everybody. Uh, that was my kind of go-to spot. Uh, when I was in the shop, I always told people that was one of my go-tos. That's the place I would tell everyone to go to. Um, don't worry. I won't lie. I got a few hidden ones that um, I don't speak of. And uh, that's for good reason. It's just so that I get them to myself. Um, I took Brian to one of them, and so from there, now let's kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what to do. Um, so leader selection, I always tell people, if you're going brook trout fishing or trout fishing with pretty much anything that isn't a streamer, my go-to is going to be a nine-foot, 
like either 4x or 5x leader. Um, not going to make it difficult. I generally fished, you know, either 7.5 or 9 foot 5x. And then fly wise, you know, guys, I could sit there and tell you a million flies. Go with what you have confidence in. It is, uh, it is a uh, more challenging. You got, well, actually, yeah, it's three river crossings to get to there, David. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit easier, the Rapid Inn, that is one of the reasons why the Rapid Inn is so well known is it's a little easier to get into um, because you can actually drive pretty much right up to it. There's, and then you've also got, and I know a couple of you guys uh, went out there like two weeks ago, Dry River out near Harrisonburg. That's a great one um, if you've got some mobility challenges. A brook trout stream generally is going to be a little bit more challenging because they're not, it's not a flat bottom. Um, yeah. Brian, I'm going to get to that. That's one of the reasons why I started out with a brook trout stream was they're usually a little bit less uh, stream gauge dependent. So, um, but talking about your flies, talk, I always say go with what you got confidence in. You know, there's a couple of generic patterns out there. Um, so, yeah, don't go on a big rainy day. These streams come up and go down really fast. Uh, I have been on the Mormons as it's come up because they had a thunderstorm up on the higher up in the, in the watershed. And, yeah, I had to wait out a little while for it to come back down for me to be able to do the last stream crossing safely. Um, that was not fun. The second stream crossing was was a challenge and might have been slightly risky. The last one was bad. Um, but so talking about your flies, getting back to that, you know, nymphs, well, see, you haven't caught, so you don't have anything to have confidence in. Well, that's the thing. So go with something generic. Go with, for nymphs, go with a pheasant tail. For dries, Go with a caddis. I mean, I can tell you, when I say go with something you've got confidence in, you don't have to know everything you're doing. Um, Brian and I have done a couple trips in the last year. Um, and, hey, Brian, how many times have we tied on the same fly to start with? I'll give you a hint. Once. That's the fact that we wanted our dry and our dry dropper rig to be, the, to be a stimulator because we wanted something that floated really well. Brian and I don't ever fish the same flies twice. Um... It's what we do. It's what we've got confidence in. And if you've never caught a, never caught a trout, best thing to do is to go with a basic thing. Um, yeah. You know, and talk to people. Uh, you know, talk to a local fly shop. So, yeah, talk to your local fly shop. They'll, you know, they'll tell you what to do. Um, I tell people, you know, go with something basic. Don't overthink it. We, uh... You know, we tend to open up our fly boxes, and a lot of us have a lot of flies in them. Pretty quickly, we uh, we build that up um, because, you know, we think, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I laugh. I open up my fly box, see about a dozen different patterns, and I'm going to fish two of them, maybe three of them. Like, it's the reality of it. I'm going to fish what I've got confidence in because if you've got confidence in it, you're going to fish it better. And you're going to be more willing to put it into the good spots. Um, so as you're learning, some of the better, some of the great things to do is maybe go to something like a Suzy Q farm. Um, go to, you know, the South River. Honestly, the South River in Waynesboro is a great beginner's place. Um, easier access, generally. Um, bottom is pretty good. And South River in Waynesboro, I mean, it gets a fair bit of pressure, but it still has got fish in there. Um, I mean, I've got friends who fish that place two, three times a week, and they're just always catching fish. Um, might be because they're fishing two, three times a week, but they're out there all the time. Um, I keep trying to tell them, go fish somewhere else, please. I'm tired of seeing the South River as your background. Um, but that's just me. That's uh, that's just because the fact that I like to go to a variety of places. I rarely ever fish the same place more, you know, more than about two, three times in a row. But, so yeah, I mean, I'm reading kind of what Brian's posting. So, you know, talking about that in the South River, it's in my book, somewhere in here. I actually saw it today. Oh, hey, what do you know? Here it is. Oh, I don't even have my, I don't have my webcam on. Sorry, guys. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit of playing around tonight. So, 
South River in Waynesboro is there's a special regulation section. It is an awesome little section of stream. Um, you do have to have a special permit for it, but it's free. It's the same permit you get if you're going to go fish, like let's say Mossy Creek or Buffalo Creek. Uh, you get all those. I just literally check those boxes every year uh, when I'm getting my license. I don't know if I'm going to go or not. It's free. You know what? It's free. I'm just, in case I go, I don't even have to think about it. Um, but those are, you know, those are your three special regulations, especially in our area. Um, luckily, it happened to be the three that you have to have a permit for anyways. So, you know, we you hear us talk about Mossy Creek a lot, and I don't suggest Mossy Creek generally for somebody who's never caught trout because it is, well, it's two things it could be. It is either, you know, really going to be a great day or it's going to be a really tough day. Mossy will give you whatever Mossy wants to give you. Mossy has a personality. Um, I mean, I can tell you, went out with other fishing managers from around the state onto Mossy. You know, we're supposed to be great fishermen. We got beat up. We didn't catch a single fish. We didn't see a single fish all day. And then literally the next day, you know, one of the guys was like, dude, I killed it. Um, yeah, you get these permits from DWR, same place when you're getting your license. Um, you basically got to check the box for that. That's uh, further down. I don't even remember because at this point I just hit renew um, with all mine because uh, I've got fresh salt, national forest stamp, trout permit. My three, I don't even know. I've got a lot. Um, I, I love it. I, I, I enjoy when I've got to get my license every year. Um, one of these days I'm going to get a lifetime. I'm going to get smart and just buy my lifetime. But so, yep, for, like, for Mossy Creek, you got to have that permit. For South River, you got to have that permit. And that's where having something like this book or a book, there's another book out there from Bo Beasley. Bo's book is not a bad book. I can't find my copy of it. I'm kind of mad because Bo personally signed it to me. Um, but that one actually has got fewer, far fewer places to go. But it's easier for somebody getting into it because you don't have a million options. This thing has, I feel like, just about every stream in the state, it feels like. I I have yet to really generally find a place that has fish, and then gone back and looked and not been able to find it in here. Um, so Bo's book is another good book. Like I said, I couldn't find it. I don't know where I put it. Um, somebody might have borrowed it. I don't know. Um, but Bo's book is a good book. I always tell people, like everything, double check the directions on how to get there because everybody messes up. Um, yeah, this, but yeah, Brian's right. The special permits are free. Um, but yeah, but you know, Bo's book is another one and kind of, you know, how to figure out what to do when you get there. I hate to say it to some sense, put that fly in the water. Um, think about that video Brian gave us two weeks ago. Um, how to fish a spring Creek, a spring Creek, isn't much different. If you think, if you watch the Spring Creek video and the Brook Trout video, when it comes to trout fishing, you've got pretty much the two main types of water that we have in the state of Virginia. Uh, you know, you've got a Spring Creek, and you've got a Freestone Stream. So from there, you know, species of trout, they all generally live in the same places. Um, you know, you'll, you'll learn, you know, kind of brown trout like to be in a little bit, you know, a little bit more cover that they can dart out from. Rainbow trout like to be out in the places. Um, yep, I'll leave in the comment the books' names, uh, and I'll I'll actually have uh, maybe I'll even go try to find them and put Amazon links in there for you. Um, I know Flyfish Guide to Virginia is in there because I just went and looked at it to see if there was a new edition. Because mine's I know mine's old. Um, my dad actually has got one from the I think it's the early to mid nineties. It's the first edition. Uh, it is fun to see the differences. Um, and that one, that's a cool book. That's a, just a fun one to thumb through to see how things have changed. Um, the flies that he talks about, how everything has changed. So the other thing that I have, and again, this thing's going to look like it's been through war because it's lived in my backseat of my car. I do keep one of these with me. So when we're out in some of these places that we like to go to, we don't necessarily have cell phone signal. Um, our GPSs aren't, you know, necessarily working correctly. 
I have a gazetteer. Um, this one's an older one. Is it totally accurate? I don't know. It's, you know, I don't remember what year I got this thing. But it's lived in the back of my car for years. And yes, I still do pull it out from time to time. Um, you know, I tell everyone like, yeah, we, you know, we got all this technology and yet I'm going to pull out a book from time to time. My phone is great. I love my phone. There are some places that we go that you haven't had a cell phone signal in five miles, 10 miles. Um, I mean, I know with North Fork of the Mormons, when I left, you know, I'd go to make a phone call and, you know, I, I'd have to wait 20 minutes to be able to get down to cell phone signal. Yeah, that's, um, you know, have a gazetteer with you. It's a great option. So, you know, kind of from our trout fishing, you know, and I just kind of did a basic, you know, find something in here, find something in the book, talk to a fly shop. First thing I'm going to say is, when in doubt, call a fly shop, talk to them. The guy's always, you know, it's going to make their day. You know, if not, pull out a book. Um, I'm not a big fan of following what you see on social media. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, Fly Fishing Virginia by Bo Beasley. Yep, that's it. Uh, I think Bo's releasing a new version, or at least he's told me that he is. Um, I don't think he has. Maybe he hasn't done it yet. Uh, I haven't really been talking to Bo too much lately. I didn't get a chance to see him at the Fly Fishing and Wine Festival this year since we didn't have it. Um, but, you know, I'm not a big fan of social media fishing. Big reason is, is that, you know, unless it is, you know, your buddy who says, hey, you should go there. Um, you know, if you see it online, 100 people have seen it online. Minimum 100 people. And... One thing I've always said is for every person you tell, they tell five people. So that's not going to be, you know, that place is going to get run over real quick. So that's sort of, you know, the reason why I'm not a big social media fisherman. Um, I do look at all the pages because I do like to see other people catching fish. And I love whenever somebody uh, says they caught a fish someplace and I've been to those places before. And... You know, it is what it is. Oh, I thought Brian was texting me. Um, okay, so, yeah, some other places to kind of think about, you know, and just kind of going off of memory. Um, Brian lives up in Charlottesville still. I won't lie. You can actually have seen. I haven't been to Bear Trove in four years. Um, I left Charlottesville a few years ago. But to talk about kind of, you know, let's go north of Charlottesville. Let's go north Charlottesville streams. Rapidan is the most common one. Um, Rose River. Um, you know, if you're looking for easy access, those two are pretty easy access. Uh, the lower parts of White Oak Canyon are not bad. White Oak Canyon is the most popular parking lot, I believe, in the country, it feels like. Um, it's a beautiful hike. I don't blame people for wanting to go there. Um, generally, most of them are not fishing, but, you know, getting parking is always fun. Uh, doing, let's see, I'm trying to, I'm just literally going off of memory, guys. Um, you know, Conway River, Lower Conway, so it's, Lower Conway is where most people think of the Conway River. It has become pretty much just posted. Uh, since I was a kid, when I was a kid, pretty much had access there. Um, yep, DWRs, I, I want to call them DGIF, I still can't call them DWR yet. Um, I get my hand smacked regularly by, uh, by my friends over there, uh, for calling them DJIF still. Eh, they'll always be DJIF to me. But, yeah, Brian's talking about going to higher elevations for brook trout. Now, we also have stocked waters. The DWR site tells us where stocked waters are. Personally, I like to go to delayed harvest. Big reason for that is... Theoretically, the fish are still there. Um, there is public fishing um, at Rose River. Just below Rose River Farm is a public stretch. Got to go to... Let me see if I can pull it up. See if I can find uh, DWRs. And that's interesting. Sorry, guys. Like I said...
switched over to this. I'm going to try to pull it up for you guys. Let's see. I don't want Rose River Farm. So we're going to kind of go down. Rose River Farm is awesome, by the way. If you can get, you know, if you are willing to pay to go fish it and you can get in, it is totally worth it. Um, let's see. Yeah, where is our friend's? Fry River does have fish, just there are going to be bad days. Um, and that was the reason why, like, I made sure I put, I pointed out, we can't guarantee you fish. Um, there we go. Department of Wildlife Resources. So this is an awesome little map right here. And what this map shows is streams that are fishable um, and it breaks it down if you look a red line is stocked trout waters the light blue line is special regulation waters so those are streams that are going to be delayed harvest that sort of thing purple is a wild trout waters so something like this and i literally just you saw i typed in rose river fly fishing dwr um and it pulled up this map and it's then it's got the names. So then what am I going to do? Let's say I want to do, you know, let me just try to find something. Actually, I'd love to find. There we go. We are going to type in, we're going to look at Swift Run in Greene County. Why? Well, it's Charlottesville chapter area, and um, Swift Run happens to flow through the backyard I grew up in. Um, did not have trout in it. I'm going to go to find... Ah, that didn't help me. Let's run DWR did not help me. So this actually is a whole site on accessible, on accessible floating, floating, fishing and boating. Um, so this is actually, you know, if you're looking for that sort of thing, and there are a lot of days that we are, Department of Inland, or Department of Wildlife Resources, not came in Inland Fisheries, has truly just a site for this. Um, and they talk about it and they tell you what is available and they give you the county that it's in. It's awesome for everybody. Um, these are great places because they make sure they're good. Um, but that was not what we wanted. I'm gonna go and search. Swift Run on their website. Let's see what our friends, friends around the corner for me talk about. So, the Creek Lake, hey, that's right by me. So, I hate to say, Swift Run, they don't have anything on right now. Um, and there's a reason for that. I'm just going to say, it's not worth it. That's the reason why I brought it up, was uh, not one of my favorite places to go trout fishing. Not in a pretty place. Um, I really don't enjoy catching my uh, trout behind pots and pans. So, you know, you know, that's just my sort of a thing. Um, Brian's talking about brook trout streams, being able to look at the overheads. That's helpful. Um, with me, and I think, I think you guys have figured out with me by now, I like to explore those trickles. Um, Brian, unfortunately, got drug along on a let's go back explore an old haunt of mine and um i don't think he had a great time um i think we got some amazing photos out of it we didn't catch a lot of fish that's just fine with me um i saw fish much higher up than where we were finding fish i found fish about 800 vertical feet higher and up than where we were than where we caught fish so i don't know what had happened there 
Yeah. You know, if you can't find information, most likely it's not great. Um, or, or it's such a challenge to get to, you're not really going to find, you know, it's really hard to get to and not a lot of people go there. Um, that's the other thing is that some of these, you know, higher streams, you know, high up in the hills and up in, you know, up along the Skyline Drive, they can be hard to get to. And thus, there's not a lot of info on them. Um, I showed you Doyle's River. That is, what, 2,000? No, it's, that one's actually about 1,800 feet of vertical to get down to the good fishing on the river from the parking lot. Um, it's not easy. Uh, so that's the reason why it doesn't get fished a lot. But there used to be fish there. I haven't been up back there in a while. Um, I can just say there used to be. For a long time, my biggest brook trout I ever caught came out of that river. Um, wonder why. Right, because nobody can get up there. So we talked about trout, and trout season is, well, we're in peak trout right now. Um, we're getting to the peak trout season. March is peak. March is when we should be out there. Uh, I know last week we didn't believe that that uh, spring was ever going to come, but I don't know if anyone went outside today, and I don't know where you live, what it was like, but down by me, it was 65 degrees. Um, it was hard to work from inside the house today. I was not a happy camper about looking outside and seeing it be that pretty and not being able to go out and see it. But I want to be able to kind of talk. We had also had the re request. Um, you know, we also had, had the request about smallmouth because that season's coming, and that's really a really large section of when we can fish and what is a good time to fish. Um, in the Charlottesville region, we've got really, you know, we got, well, three rivers. Um, well, technically four, but we got the Shenandoah River over on the other side of the mountain from us. Um, you know, Greene County, Charlottesville's right about here. Shenandoah is right up here. So Shenandoah is North Fork, South Fork, and the Shenandoah. I would say, you know, if you've got any questions on that, Give our friends over at Mossy Creek a call. Um, they are the experts on it. I enjoy the South Fork. North Fork is weightable, is more, much more weightable. Um, but when it comes to small fishing, I'm, I'm gonna start out with, there's gonna be some learning curve with it, watching gauges and what you feel comfortable with. And with some other streams that I'm gonna talk about, with the other places I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna mention CFS. That is how I measure gauge height. Um, that's how I measure how high the water is. I don't measure off of gauge height because to me, it doesn't tell me anything. Um, you know, gauge height at one gauge could be 20 feet. And then literally you go a mile or two down the river and high water could be at five feet. You know, that doesn't tell me anything. CFS tells me everything, cubic feet per second. Um, that tells me how much water is flowing through there. But Depending on where in the river you are, that could be, and what you're doing, that could be, indicate some things. Um, so I will talk about, you know, the James River to start, because I happen to have a book about the James River. Um, and let me switch my camera. This is part of the fun. Oop, why do I have my webcam utility still going? Well, yeah. Um... Shenandoah is a cool river. Uh, it's got some amazing smallmouth fishing on it. But, you know, one thing is that the Shenandoah, you go there for numbers. Um, Shenandoah has got typically smaller smallmouth. And it's a big enough river that even though they're smaller, they're more they're pretty plentiful. Um, James River, which I'll talk about now. This is my favorite book. It's literally the James River Guide. It is a book about fishing and floating on Virginia's finest river. Um, this is an older edition. Uh, so it was updated in 2014. I've literally got a note on the back. Um, and it's actually about 16 bucks on Amazon. So, and now it covers from the headwaters. So where the cow pasture and the Jackson meet, that is the headwaters of the James. Where those two streams meet, that is the start of the James River. Down to, into the city of Richmond, um, down into where I live. And the city is cool. City, you know, I can talk about where to fish, um, you know, but I'm also going to, you know, I'm going to tell you guys where to be, where to fish and where to be, where not to. Um, 
If you've got any questions about that, feel free to send Brian or me emails about it. Um, I can walk you through the city of Richmond, but it's not what we're going to cover tonight. So there's a couple of places that I like to talk about. Um, if you're in the Charlottesville region, one thing I would like to say on the James is if you're going to wade fish it, low, I always said about 1,800 CFS, and that's personal. Um, and that's at the gauge at Scottsville. So on my phone, I have an app, and I'll just tell you, it's called riverflows.net. Right now it's loading up. Should have, I don't know how well you guys can see this, at Scottsville. So it gives me, I've got several rivers on here just because I've always left them on. James River Scottsville is flowing at 16,300 right now. Not exactly weightable right now. Also, it's really cold and you're not going to want to fish for smallmouth right now. Anyways, um, but that's big. Um, that's high water. We're in winter time. We're in kind of that spring melt. It's going to be high water. Um, so one thing about the James is it doesn't drop quickly. Even at Scottsville, you've got, what, 100 and some odd miles of river above you? Uh, James is a big river. It is the founding river. Um, don't let anyone fool you. Potomac River is not the founding river. James River is the founding river. Um, but also on here, I've got James River at Richmond West Ham. That's my local one. 28,600. Um, so if I'm going to fish the James in a boat, down below the city of Richmond, 10,000 CFS is my number. That's, you know, 2.8 times higher. Um, yeah, Brian keeps Shenandoah near Elkton and uh, Rivanna River near Charlottesville. I keep Rivanna River at Palmyra just because that's the one that I use. Um, you know, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about the, that. Ugh, words come out of mouth. So I actually happen to have pulled up on the DJIF website They've got various floats in here. And really what I'm going to use the floats for is to tell me where the ramps are. Not necessarily where to uh, where to be able to do that. Um, or where, what floats to do. Because I'm not a big, flan, big fan of floats. It takes two cars. Thus you've got to have a friend. You know, minimum you've got to have at least one friend. Which sometimes is hard, especially in COVID. Um, I can tell you none of my friends want to go floating with me. Um, you know, sad me. But eh, I live. Um, but it tells me where the ramps are and I can go use those ramps because they're public, public access points. I don't have to worry about it. It's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of learning as to, you know, which ones you like. And I always tell people like, just go down and look at them. Um, but I got a couple in here that I, that I'm a big fan of and they're in the Charlottesville area, Howardsville to Scottsville. So what does that tell me? I got Howardsville and I got Scottsville for public ramps. Howardsville is a cool little one, a little higher up on the James. You might run into a muskie or two. Um, they have been seen up in that area. Uh, they're not common. Do not go targeting them there because it's going to be even worse day of muskie fishing than normal. But that is a nice little area. Um, Scottsville ramp, nice ramp. I have taught schools there. There's actually great wading right around the Scottsville ramp. Uh, if you wade up from the ramp, great wading. You can get up uh, about a quarter mile, half mile pretty easily. Um, fairly flat bottom. It's not big, chunky rocks. So, you know, it's sandy bottom. It's gravelly bottom. So it makes it a little easier. Uh, with smallmouth, you're going to go looking for structure. And flywise for smallmouth, I guess I probably should talk about this. I'm pretty simple. Nine foot, zero X liter. And I'm going to put on generally something like a clouser or, you know, a CK bait fish or even a big woolly bugger. Um, and when I say big woolly bugger, I mean like size four, size six, something like that. Um, you don't need a size two. You don't necessarily need to go throw a size two. But stick with something like that and that'll at least give you a starting point. Um, you know, we have spent, you know, you can look at the old, all the videos we did last summer, Brian and I put together last summer, we talked about a lot of smallmouth videos, um, because it's what Brian and I love, um, that is our passion, is smallmouth fishing. Give me the option of going trout fishing or smallmouth fishing, I'm going to take smallmouth nine times out of ten. Um, occasionally I'll go trout fishing just because 
haven't been trout fishing in a while. Um, next one, Scottsville to Hardware River Wildlife Management Area. So my, probably one of my favorite places to have people go was Hardware River. But you need lower water. Um, that ramp right there, Scottsville's good about 1800, you know, personally. Um, yeah, Creelix is another great one. Uh, but hardware, you want a little lower, about 1400 CFS. It drops off real deep pretty quick right at the ramp. Um, if you can get through that deep section, there's some pretty good shallow, you know, I say shallow, I mean like knee deep water. Um, it's fairly easy to move around. There are some big rocks in there, but generally they're easy to see. Um, some monster smallmouth around there. Uh, Hardware River is a great one. Um, I'll give you a hint, the Scottsville to Hardware River. Don't be surprised if you pull up to Hardware River Wildlife Management Area, you see um, Ellie Rhodes' drift boat trailer sitting there. because That's one of his favorite floats, or at least it's one that he uses. I see him regularly there. Um, you know, he's a great guide. Uh, guides from Mossy Creek, good buddy of mine. Um, but Hardware River is a great place to go wade fish. And from Charlottesville, it's half hour or so, 45 minutes um, from town. I will say, don't, you gotta watch the directions from Google Maps because it has taken me, one time it took me, I'm not kidding, it took me into a cow field. That was when I turned around and realized that it had, that it was wrong. Um, that is one to pull out, pull out the actual map and map it first. Um, yeah, Brian talks about, you know, it's an attractor pattern. Most smallmouth patterns are attractor patterns, at least in my opinion. Um, go with a clouser to start with. The clouser was made, was built for smallmouth. Um, you know, if not, go with a woolly bugger. I like, so I'll typically throw a white woolly bugger on a bright sunny day and a brown one on a cloudy day. Those are just kind of the two that I would start out with. And that's truly, guys, just starting. Um, if I'm not catching fish after, you know, an hour, open up box, look in box and go, eh, what else do I want to put on? You'll be amazed. You will find a fly that you caught a fish on and you'll just start catching fish on that fly um, because you've got confidence in that fly. And that's the key to these flies, um, you know, is literally just if you're not catching fish, try something else. Don't, you know, don't blame it on yourself. Blame it on the fly. Remember, you're, it's never your fault. It's always the fly's fault. Um, yeah, that's not true, but, you know, we got to blame somebody. Uh, so the other one is, I've never really done the hardware to New Canton, um, but done Columbia. Um, done New Canton to Columbia. That's a fun one. Um, you know, Columbia is not a bad little ramp. It's uh, kind of off and away from a lot of people. Um, it's got some deep parts right around it, but... You know, you can still wade fish right around there. And one thing I always say is just go look. Um, take a Sunday, you know, take a Saturday, take a day, and just go bounce, you know, go down, you know, from ramp to ramp and just look at them. Um, figure out which one you like the looks of best because that's really, you know, Hardware River is kind of how I learned it was I looked at it and I was like, eh, that looks, that looks like it could be good fishing right around there. And it's just the reason why I said it looked like it could be good fishing because I could see structure um, from the ramp. You know, I was like, well, I wouldn't have to walk very far to get to there. Whereas, you know, if you go to, uh, you know, somewhere, I'll just say, you know, one right down by me, Maiden's Landing, you look and you're like, I can't see structure for a mile. I got to walk a mile. I got to wait up a mile up this river to get to good structure. It's not going to be fun. Um, I don't go to Maiden's for wade fishing. But, you know, just kind of as an example, of kind of what I like to do. So, you know, truly... Love this little book. Um, I have used this book quite a bit. Now, I will say with the, uh, let me switch back to, come on, oh, where's my, why is my mouse disappearing? Interesting, technical difficulties. There we go. Um, so, one of my favorites, one of the reasons why I also like this book is, it is not only fly fishing. Guys, while we are Project Healing Waters fly fishing, you know there are days that you just don't want to pull out the fly rod. Um, that's okay. You know, I'm not a purist like that. I 
I have a spinning rod. I use it. Um, Riverview Park. That's I was gonna get to the Rivanna and it, Brian, I truly was sitting there this afternoon going, what is the name of that park that I never can remember the name of? Um, so now I'm gonna talk about the Rivanna because it's again local to my Charlottesville chapter. And Rivanna is an awesome river. It does not get the respect that it deserves. Uh, so cool thing about the Rivanna is in the springtime, some of the big smallmouth, and I, I don't mean like 12 inches. I don't mean 14 inches. I mean like 20s and 24s. They come up to Rivanna from the James and f swim up into Charlottesville to spawn. That means that they're, and they'll hang around for a little while. And every year, a couple will hang out. We'll just stay around a bit longer. We'll stay around, you know, June, July. Once the Rivanna starts really dropping, they'll, you know, drop back to the James. Where they're like, eh, okay, maybe this new home isn't quite as good. But the Rivanna River in Charlottesville it's got some great smallmouth and largemouth fishing. Um, caught a six-pound largemouth out of the Rivanna a couple years ago. So, you know, Riverview Park, Brian talked about Riverview Park. Um, Dardentau. Dardentau was the name of the one I was thinking of. Um, you know, those two are great, easy access points. We all can fish them. Um, Milton is another one that I really do enjoy. Um, access point in Milton. So, yeah, Brian fishes it once a week. I used to fish it all the time. Um, I'll talk about CFS on the Rivanna, though. Rivanna is a small river. Remember how I said the James River, you know, 1800 CFS? I don't like going into the Rivanna much beyond about 350. Um, and that's starting to really push it. That's where I'm starting to really question my life choices that day. Um, especially... Dardentau is not quite as bad, and that's one of the reasons why Dardentau is pretty nice, because when Dardentau floods, you kind of know it. Um, Milton can get really bad when the water gets up, because you don't realize how high it is until you're in a bad situation. Um, and I don't want any of you guys to get into a bad situation. So truly, 300 CFS, and, you know, go ahead and, you know, look it up. And only thing you got to do is look up gauge heights, you know, water gauge, Virginia. It'll get you to where you need to go. Um, but Milton, the other one, is... What is Palmyra? Well, not Palmyra. Um, what is the lake? Eh, I can't remember. I don't have my map in front of me. Um, well, Palmyra is not a bad one. Uh, you know, it's another good one right at Palmyra. Um, but really, you know, Dardentau, Milton, Riverview Park, those are going to be kind of my three on the right banana right in town. Um, and like I said, Charlottesville's got some great ones. Yeah, the, yeah, um, Rivanna River Company's kind of added some challenges to our lives. Um, Shadwell, I've never fished Shadwell. I'm not gonna lie. I've never fished it. Um, Milton is, uh, there, and then I usually go down just below it, um, or down well below. Um, yeah, Rivanna River Company is done, you know, but I'm not mad at them. You know, it's awesome to see somebody do what they did. Um, I remember when they started and I questioned if it would work. And man, they have worked hard and they actually have put, they've put some effort into our rivers. Um, you know, we don't want to get too mad at them because they've put some money into our ramps and they've, you know, to help themselves out. But they've also done it to help us out. So one thing I'll do, um, and I'll kind of talk about this in the summertime, I like to fish Milton in the summertime. Um, why? Because I will fish it in the morning. I'll fish it in the morning until about 10 or 11 o'clock, because usually around then is about the time the first of the tubers and kayakers and well, the plastic hatch starts happening. Um, you know, and the river isn't very, that big. I mean, let's be honest here, it's the right band. It's not a big river. But that's one of the reasons why it's also a great place to go learn smallmouth fishing and to go do it is because you don't have very much water to try to figure out. It's, you know, oh, I can just about cast all the way across this river. Um, with a 50-foot cast, you can. Um, <coughs> so, um, kayak, uh, you can put a kayak in there. Um, my general floats... On the Rivanna, usually, unfortunately, are now 
pretty well taken over by Rivanna River Company. Um, I don't float the Rivanna very much. I prefer to wade fish it because it's a smaller river. Um, if I'm going to float, I'm going to go float the James because I want to cover some water that day. Um, but yeah, the, uh, but, you know, just kind of talking about summertime and trying to deal with the fact that, you know, the Rivanna does have quite a bit of kayak and canoe and tubing pressure. I like to go down to Milton. I like to get down below everything. Um, gives me more time before everyone shows up. And then I can go and fish for a little while. And also, the thing with smallmouth is, actually, that law, John, has been questioned and I believe got thrown out. Um, from what I understand, the new law for kayakers and uh, everything. I, uh, from what I understand, that got thrown out. I was uh, right about it last week, I believe. Um, but, you know, basically, I like Milton. Gives me time. Um, Brian talked about 250 on the South Fork. Yeah, um, 250 is about the most, because really the big thing is the South Fork is the main fork of the Rivanna. North Fork isn't very big. South Fork is where most of the water comes from. And where I'm getting mine is I'm pulling from Palmyra. So I've had quite a few little streams kind of flow in also um, down below. So, you know, 350, 400, it's about all I'm willing to do. Um, yeah, I, I just, it's, I don't know. I, uh, I thought I saw something that the, uh, that the state uh, decided to back off on that one this year. But I could be wrong. Um, so... You know, but really to talk about, you know, your smallmouth, just go throw something white. You know, go throw a big white streamer. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it, that's really what I do. Um, I will, you know, open up my box. Nine times out of ten, I start out the day with a CK bait fish, white, size one. Um, nine times out of ten, I end the day with CK bait fish, white, size one, because I have confidence in it. Um, so, typical flow trip... Um, those guys, what are they? I want to say like 50 bucks, I want to say, like somewhere around there, 40, 50 bucks. Um, that's to do, uh, that's to do Red Man River Company. Now, if you want a guide, it goes up from there. Um, guided trip, going rate these days, I think is right around that 300 mark for a single person, 400 for two. Um, so... Yeah, Brian, you like small Dorito fly. You're wrong. It doesn't catch fish. So this is just me and Brian, because if we ever go out together for smallmouth, truly, we are throwing different things because it's what we have confidence in. Um, I remember the day I developed confidence in the CK bait fish. I literally walked into I walked into work the next day and said, Oh my god, that that fly actually does catch fish. Um, you know, and that's that's where confidence is built, is Hate to say it, sometimes it's, you know, I can't tell you what the perfect fly is. Um, what I can tell you is uh, put on what you like. Um, put on, you know, what what do you look at and go, man, I bet you I could catch a fish on that. And if that doesn't work, try something else that you think you can catch a fish on. Um, this sport, we overthink it. Um, it's one of the downfalls I have seen in my lifetime watching the fly fishing world. And seeing how, you know, no, you must be this regimented. No, 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 no. You know, you must know everything about entomology. No, I have a degree in it. No. Um, trust me, I rarely ever use it. Um, so, yep, Brian's actually is going to cover uh, stream fishing for smallmouth in a video similar to his brook trout and similar to his uh, Spring Creek one. Um, just unfortunately ran out of time last fall uh, before the Rivanna jumped and uh, came up in volume and came down so far in temperature that I'm not putting on a wetsuit and being on video. I don't think you guys want to see that. Uh, just give you a visual you don't want. Um, and yes, I do on a wetsuit. So yeah, um, we're going to get some underwater video. Brian's talking about it. Um, whenever we do that, Brian, we need to give Give me some warning and I'll go out and help you with it. But so I just kind of wanted to be able to talk a little bit about, you know, picking out where to go. And it's more first thing I'm going to say, you know, first and foremost, call your local shop. Um, call, you know, if you, you know, I saw Fredericksburg, um, give Woodbridge Orvis a call. Um, you know, 
give them a call. They they know what's going on. Trust me, they know. I, I, I still get cold phone calls from them from time to time asking what's going on in Richmond. Um, you know, they, uh, you know, if you're down, you know, down at the beach, you know, give, you know, yeah, I'm trying to think of what fly shops down there these days. Um, if you're coming up my way, you know, I'd honestly give local store a call. Give local Orvis. I'll tell you Orvis because I worked for them. 14 years I was with them. Um, but give local fly shop a call. And it's fun. You know, it's a, it's a good thing to do. The, they're there to help you. That's really what they want to do. Um, yeah, striper fishing is what's going on. Uh, shad season is coming soon to Richmond. Um, so that is one of my favorite things to do. And uh, I won't lie, I might be putting the boat together right now to get ready to go out and do a little uh, searching once the river comes down to sub-12,000 CFS. Um, because while the water is cold, a couple days the way that we've had, it's going to be staging. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be time for them to make the run. Stripers will be following right up behind them. Um, stripers will be coming up to spawn in the city of Richmond. It is a fun thing to watch. Uh, every year somebody gets, catches a 40-plus inch striper um, while shad fishing. It's fun. Um, that's coming. Uh, that, you know, if you guys want to learn about that, feel free to reach out to me. I will talk to you. Give me a call. You know, I'll be able to talk to you and tell you kind of how to do it um, on foot. I do it from a boat because I have no own one. Um, literally, it gets used about five times a year to go, to go shad fishing. It is what it is built for, what we use it for. But kind of want to end tonight. Um, I think I've probably talked your ears off. I will put into the comments um, all these books that I've talked about, and I'm going to put Amazon links to them. Um, you know, if you don't love Amazon for whatever reason, you want to go find it somewhere else, at least then you've got the names. And I think that's probably the best thing to do. So, and what I'll do is I'll put that in there. And I hope everyone has a good night. I hope everyone gets out and uh, tries to enjoy this warm weather while we have it. Because I looked at the weather forecast for the weekend and it ain't pretty again. Um, we're in that time of year. It's just time to sit down and tie flies and tell lies. So... Tell everyone have a great night. Bye.